Stage big question. Today we're talking about the credit crisis with John Hawksworth, head of macroeconomics at PwC. John, thanks for coming onto the show. Um, in the last fortnight, last couple of weeks, enormous uh, sort of ructions within the the, um, the the global banking system. What I mean, has the situation dramatically worsened in the last couple of weeks? Well, I think a lot of risks have crystallised, if you like, uh, particularly in terms of the US uh, banking system and, and the financial sector. And you know, We've seen something that's pretty much unprecedented, certainly in my sort of working life over the last 20 years or so. Uh, we've never had a situation where we've got virtually a kind of closing, closing down of, uh, of many of the credit markets, particularly in the US at the moment. Uh, and so obviously, you know, we're, we're talking on Friday the 26th of September, you know, these things could change literally day by day. Uh, we're still waiting to hear whether this bailout plan in Washington will be agreed by the politicians. But clearly something does need to be done very quickly in order to try and get the banks, you know, op- banking system operational again in the US because uh, banks just seem to be not lending to each other. Clearly central banks are trying to provide liquidity into the system to make up for that lack of interbank lending. But, but the danger is that if that goes on for any sort of lengthy period of time, that will inevitably have an impact on uh, on the corporate sector who won't be able to borrow money effectively and also on consumers who, who will find that their, the costs of their borrowing go up or all their borrowing just doesn't become available. So you know, the, what's needed uh, you know, at the moment, obviously we're in enormously uncertain times is for the US authorities and potentially the authorities elsewhere around the world to kind of, if you like, get control of the situation, try to restore the banking system to a functional state. Um, and hopefully I'll do that over the next couple of days. Um, uh, and in, that, in that, that situation, maybe the impact on the real economy won't be that bad. Uh, indeed, it could even be that that process of adjustment would actually help because it would resolve some of the uncertainties that have been hanging over the banking system for, for the last year or so since the credit crunch began. Right. Uh, so, I mean, it's really a question of it being uncertain. I mean, I suppose f- for us, we, we see sort of these... You know, terrible headlines but banks invest huge investment banks going into administration um, we probably presume that you know an economist forecast would all uh, you know turn downwards you know you'd all be expecting recession after well, those I sorts of that, events but it's, it's, well, it's unclear even, even before these events we were probably expecting a mild recession in the UK and many of the other major economies I think obviously these events have probably reinforced that kind of view um, I think the question now that's so uncertain, though, is, is whether it could be a lot deeper and more prolonged than people were expecting. And that really depends on how things work themselves out, as I say, you know, day by day, you know, the picture is changing in terms of, you know, how severe it might get. Now, it could be that, you know, a week after we're having this conversation, the situation could have changed, the bailout mm-hmm. plan could have been agreed in Washington, uh, banking system could have restored some kind of normality. I think essentially the problem is the banks are holding a whole series of quite complex assets to do with uh, things linked to mortgage lending in the US, or prime lending and so on, and complex derivatives that no one really knows how to value. No one's quite sure how risky they are and what their value they are, so they're not prepared to lend to each other at the moment. So the central banks are having to go in and provide liquidity. And until that's sort of sorted out in terms of these assets are effectively kind of ring-fenced and there's some mechanism for uh, you know, putting a value on and getting them off the bank's balance sheets, it's very difficult for the banks to return to a situation of normality in terms of their own lending, in terms of their, their interbank lending. And so it's very difficult for the banking system to, to perform the kind of essential system of financial intermediation that it plays in the, in the modern economy. So, you know, if this doesn't get resolved, it could be very serious. On the other hand, if it does get resolved and if this, these events act as a catalyst to resolving that, that banking uh, uh, situation more quickly... Uh, and so actually it helps to clarify the situation relatively quickly because it's been a spur to action. Mm-hmm. You know, in a year or two's time, you could actually say, well, actually, this was, you know, th- this was actually the beginning of, of a recovery of the banking system. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to happen immediately. Mm-hmm. We just don't know, frankly. Uh, no one knows, but, but it could go either way. So we're very much sort of sitting on a kind of tipping point where it could go horribly wrong. We could be in for something like the Japanese problems of the 90s where the banking system kind of froze up and it, the economy was in recession for a decade. We could be in a situation even as bad as the Great Recession. 
mm. the Great Depression of the 30s, only in the worst case scenario. But on the, same, on the other hand, you, know, you could actually see this as being the start of actually a solution in terms of actually kind of clearing up some of the mess in the banking system getting it back to functioning somewhat like normally. I mean, that won't happen overnight. We're probably in for at least a year of difficult circumstances. Uh, but, you know, maybe looking to then a recovery in the medium term to something like more normal credit, credit market conditions. OK. I mean, in terms of the, the UK uh, economy, um, I suppose one, one thing that a lot, a lot of tax advisors will be wondering ab about is um, what the impact is on public finances and whether this puts is going to put a greater strain there and you know which will inevitably feed through to to sort of the amount of tax that's being taken from the UK economy what's your view on the how it affects the UK public finances well i think obviously i think we've already seen that the budget deficit so far this year has been quite a lot higher than than had been projected by the treasury and i think that's going to continue so clearly we are looking at you know significant extra borrowing this year probably in excess of 50 billion pounds and probably even higher next financial year, you know, 60 billion or so uh, seems likely, even, even with a mild recession. If it's a deep recession, it could be a lot more than that because uh, borrowing can, ri can rise quite fast. And, and that's mm. basically because, as you say, you know, if people are not spending so much money, they don't pay VAT. If they're not earning so much money, they don't pay income tax, national insurance so much. Uh, stamp duty is down because of the housing market problems, because of the falls in the stock market. Capital gains tax would be affected by that as well. Inheritance tax in the longer term would also be affected by some of these asset price changes. So pretty much across the board, everything apart from North Sea oil revenues, which have been quite high because of the high oil price, uh, everything else is, pr is pretty much below target. And so there's going to be a pretty big shortfall. Now, there's nothing the government can sensibly do about that in the short term. It would be uh, suicidal to, to be raising taxes to try to recoup that shortfall mm. when you're about to head into a recession. So effectively, the government has to allow borrowing to ride up over the next couple of years. And then, you know, a couple of years down the line, hopefully once the recession is over and we're kind of moving back into a growth phase, then clearly the government will have to, you know, impose some combination of spending... Uh, growth reductions or tax increases in order to put the public finances back on a stable footing. But, but we're probably a couple of years away from, from those kind of tough decisions. So it's probably some way uh, the other side of the next general election, I would imagine, for, 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 for the point where one actually sees any big policy changes that reflect that, uh, that budget deficit problem. Right. I mean, and also, I mean, I suppose in terms of companies, um, obviously the situation is very uncertain, but if people ask your companies, FDs are coming to you saying what's what's going to happen, what what sort of concrete impacts do you think, or can you can you tell sort of FDs about what might happen to them? Under well, this? I, I mean, you know, it's not a matter, I think, of saying that there is a single forecast. I think it's a matter of saying, well, okay, there are a number of different scenarios. You might have a main scenario where you have a fairly mild recession, and clearly you could say, well, okay, what has a mild recession done to businesses like yours in the past? Mm. You know, what should you therefore be planning for in terms of your revenue line? Uh, how will it affect things like wage claims and so on, uh, bearing in mind that we've also got inflationary problems in the economy because of high energy and food prices that may you know, cause some sort of pressure for wage claims. Yeah. You know, that obviously maybe will be resisted in the current economic environment, but there, but there are sort of cost pressures as well. Um, so, so given those sort of combination of downward pressures on the revenue line, upward pressures on some of the, the costs inputs, particularly on energy and so on, uh, you know, clearly you can factor that into your model. At the same time, you'd probably want to say to them, well, okay, that's the main scenario of a mild recession. You know, you should probably also look at another scenario where it gets a lot worse, where you have a deeper recession, maybe lasting two years rather than one year. Uh, and, you know, what would that do? And, and what would be your contingency plan, you know, in, in your back pocket? So, you know, if it looked like things were heading down that, that, that less good path, you know, what would be your contingency plan in terms of trying to deal with that? So I think it's a matter of, you know, more about talking to them about the uncertainties and about, about the balance scenarios. of risks. It's not a forecasting exercise at this stage. It's okay. just too uncertain for that. OK, John, thanks for coming in. Thank you. You're clearly going to be a very busy man for some time to come. OK. Uh, thanks for joining us this week. Join us next week for more discussion of accountancy news.